Some hard problems in P-space. We now survey some natural examples of problems in P-space that are not known and not believed to belong to MP or co-MP. As was the case with MP, we can try understanding the structure of P-space by looking for complete problems, the hardest problems in the class. We will say that a problem X is P-space complete if 1. It belongs to P-space and 2. For all problems y in p-space, we have y which is a polynomial time reducible to x. It turns out analogously to the case of MP that a wider range of natural problems are p-space complete. Indeed, a number of uh, the basic problems in artificial intelligence are p-space complete. And we describe uh, three genres of these here. Planning. Planning problems seek to capture in a clean way the task of interacting with a complex environment to achieve a desired set of goals. Canonical applications include large, largest logistical operations that require the movement of people, equipment, and materials. For example, as part of a coordinating a disaster relief effort, we might decide that 20 ambulances are needed at a particular high altitude location. Before this can be accomplished, we need to get 10 snow plows to clear the road. This in turn requires emergency fuel and snow plow crews. But if we use the fuel for the snow plows, then we may not have enough for the ambulances. And you get the idea. Military operations also require such reasoning on an enormous scale and automatic planning techniques from artificial intelligence have been used to great effect in this domain as well. One can see very similar issues at work in complex solitaire games such as Rubik's Cube or the 15 puzzle, a 4x4 grid with the 15 movable tiles labeled 1, 2, 3, and so on to 15, and a single hole with the goal of moving the tiles around so that the numbers end up in ascending order. Rather than ambulances and snowplows, we now are worried about things like getting the tile labeled 6, 1 position to the left, which involves getting the 11 out of the way, but that, moves, that involves moving the 9 which uh, was actually in a good position, and so on. These toy problems can be quite tricky and are often used in artificial intelligence as a test bed for planning algorithms. Having said all this, how should we define the problem of planning in a way that's general enough to include each of these examples? Both solitaire puzzles and disaster relief efforts have a number of abstract features in common. There are a number of conditions we are trying to achieve and a set of allowable operation, operators that we can apply to achieve these conditions. Thus, we model the environment by a set C, fancy C, which is equals to uh, the collections of set C1, C2, C3, and Cn of uh, conditions. A given state of the world is specified by the subset of the conditions that actually currently hold. We interact with uh, the environment through a set, the set O1, O2, O3, and OK of operators. Each operator OI is specified by a prerequisite list containing a set of uh, conditions that must hold for OI to be invoked. And at list containing a set of conditions that will become true after OI is invoked, and a delete list containing a set of conditions that will cease to hold after OI is invoked. For example, we could model the 15 puzzle by having a condition for each possible location of each tile and an operator to move each tile between each pair of adjacent locations. The prerequisite for an operator is that its two locations contain 
the designated tile, and the hole. The problem we face is the following. Given a set C0 of initial conditions and a set C star of goal conditions, is it possible to apply a sequence of operators begin with a C0 so that we reach a situation in which precisely the conditions in C star and no others hold? We will call this an instance of uh, the planning problem. Okay, the second general is uh, quantification. We have seen in the three set problem some of the difficulty in determining whether a set of a disjunctive clauses can be simultaneously satisfied. When we add quantifiers, the problem appears to become even more difficult. Let phi of x1, x2, x3 until xn be a Boolean formula of the form c1 intersect C2 intersect C3 and so on intersect CK, where each CI is a disjunction of uh, three terms. In other words, it is an instance of three set. Assume for simplicity that N is an odd number, and suppose we ask there exists X1 for all X2, there exists X3 for all X4, and so on, there exists x n minus 2 for all x n minus 1. There exists x n such that phi of x1, x2, x3, and so on until x n is. That is, uh, we wish to know whether there is a choice for x1 so that for both choices of x2, there is a choice for x3, and so on so that phi is satisfied. We will refer to this decision problem as quantified three set, or briefly Q set. The original three set problem, by way of comparison, simply asks there exists x1, there exists x2, and so on, there exists xn minus 2, there exists xn minus 1, there exists xn, phi of x1, x2, x3, and so on until xn is satisfied or not. In other words, in a three set, it was sufficient to look for a single setting of uh, the Boolean variables. Here is an example to illustrate the kind of reasoning that underlies an instance of Q set. Suppose that we have the formula phi of x1, x2, x3 is equals to x1 union x2 union x3 intersect x1 union x2 union x3 bar intersect x1 bar union x2 union x3 intersect x1 bar union x2 bar union x3 bar and we ask there exists x1 for all x2 there exists x3 such that phi of x1 x2 x3 is satisfied or not the answer to this question is yes. We can set x1 so that for both choices of x2, there is a way to set x3 so that phi is satisfied. Specifically, we can set x1 equals to 1. Then, if x2 is set to 1, we can set x3 to 0, satisfying all clauses. And if x2 is set to 0, we can set x3 to 1, again satisfying all clauses. Problems of this type with a sequence of quantifiers arise naturally as a form of uh, contingency planning. We wish to know whether there is a decision we can make, the choice of x1, so that for all possible responses, the choice of x2, there is a decision we can make, the choice of x3, and so forth. The third genre is games. In 1996 and 1997, world chess champion Gary Kasparov was billed by the media as the defender of the human race as he faced IBM's program Deep Blue in two chess match matches. We needn't look further 
than this picture to convince ourselves that computational game playing is one of the most visible successes of contemporary artificial intelligence. A large number of two-player games fit naturally into the following framework. Players ordinate moves, and uh, the first one to achieve a specific goal wins. For example, depending on the game, the goal could be capturing the king, removing all the opponent's checkers, placing four pieces in a row, and so on. Moreover, there is often a natural polynomial upper bound on the maximum possible length of a game. The competitive facility location problem that we introduced before naturally fits within this framework. It also illustrates the way in which games can arise not just as pastimes but through competitive situations in everyday life. Recall that, Recall in, that in a competitive facility location, we are given a graph G we are given a with graph a non-negative value, value beyond negative attached value to I each node attached. I. Two players, I, two players select notes alternately, so, so that the set of a selected so notes at set of a selected all times forms, all time forms an independent forms and independent There are two wings if two she wings ultimately select a set of notes set of total notes value of total value at least the B for a given bound B. B. Player one player wins one if wins he prevents, prevents this from happening. happening. The question is, given the graph G and the bound B, is there a strategy by which player 2 can force a win?